The wars of the future will be fought over water. The fight over the waters of the Murray-Darling Basin may not yet be a war, but there is a body count as farmers lose hope in alarming numbers. And it's not just because of the drought. There has been gross mismanagement of our water resources by the government. By now you've heard about the drought and that the Darling River is dry, and that's true. In the Northern Basin, it's drought, pure and simple, and there's really nothing anyone can do until we get some proper drought-busting rain. But by now you should also have heard that the Murray River is running full. The Southern Basin is awash with water as forests are being artificially flooded and billions of litres of water are running down the Murray and out to sea every day, both at the same time. The drought, that's natural, there's nothing we can do about that. But the water waste, that's man-made and it's killing our natural environment and it's definitely killing our irrigators. Just three years ago in 2016 we had some pretty substantial floods and the lower Murray-Darling Basin was actually awash with water. Three years later the crops are dead, paddocks are dust bowls, herds are being slaughtered and farms are going bankrupt in record numbers. Worse than we saw during the millennium drought that went for 10 years. Why can't our farmers battle their way through three years of drought the way they used to battle through 10? Because things aren't the way they used to be. In 2012, just after the Millennium Drought broke, the Murray-Darling Basin plan came into effect, and that changed everything. I'll spare you the details, but in a nutshell, the government came in and bought up 30% of the available irrigation water. This left the 100% of irrigators who between them had invested billions of dollars into on-farm infrastructure and all had bills to pay and debts to service, to fight over the 70% of irrigation water that was left the government had invented its very own version of the Hunger Games, with farmers left to fight to the death over the insufficient irrigation water that was left. And death for some was the inevitable result. And this imbalance between supply and demand did what it always does. It drove prices higher, up to levels that are simply not sustainable for many types of produce. And ever since then, a huge number of irrigators in the Murray-Darling Basin have been running at a loss, they have to buy water, otherwise they lose everything they've invested in their farms. They lose their crops, they lose decades of breeding in their herds, they lose the investment they've made into their channels and pivots and infrastructure. They lose it all if they don't buy water. But every time they do buy water, they get a little bit further into debt and a little bit closer to bankruptcy. And it's all been triggered by the government's decision to buy up water using your and my money and all for the environment. And already we can see a glaring flaw with the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. It simply doesn't take into account the environmental benefits that come from irrigation. I mean, every time we fill an irrigation channel with water, there is an explosion of life. Even the supposedly evil rice growers are actually creating habitat that's full of life. Three years into a drought, and there's frogs and water birds and bugs and worms, and none of it would be here if it weren't for irrigation. And even the water lost while irrigating goes into the environment, especially into replenishing groundwater. So taking water away from irrigators is also taking water away from their environment. Watering wetlands and forests has merit, of course, but it's not a free kick. You have to look at the environmental impact of where that water has come from. And that's something that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan simply doesn't take into account. And right now there are thousands of empty dams, countless kilometres of empty irrigation channels and untold hectares of bare paddock where there could be water and life. Now you might argue that the sort of life we find here in a man-made drainage channel just isn't as important as the sort of life we find in a naturally occurring wetland, the sort of environment that developed over time and predates European settlement. But even there, we run into problems. Research has shown that 85% of the wetlands tested were not historically wetlands at all. They became wetlands after Europeans began regulating the rivers and capturing the water that used to simply run off into the ocean. So 85% of these wetlands that we're preserving and protecting using this environmental water are actually man-made. So why don't we just keep these man-made wetlands instead? The environment still gets significant benefit, Humans get food they can eat, and the government gets taxes they can spend. Sounds like a triple bottom line win to me. 
And that was part of the purpose of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan in the first place. Then Prime Minister John Howard, when arguing the need for the Water Act of 2007, which is what created the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, said that the water was for farmers in bad years. But that's been completely lost in the 12 years since. And today, we're faced with a river awash with water that farmers can't afford, while the government splashes environmental water around places like the Milua Forest, like it's paid for by taxpayers or something. Oh, hang on. How has a plan that was supposed to improve water security become the cause of water scarcity? In a word, Politics. Whatever John Howard's intentions in 2007, it's clear that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan now prioritises so-called environmental outcomes far above human outcomes. If you read the plain English version of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, you'll see that they predicted that buying up 2.75 trillion litres of irrigation water was going to come at a cost of just 800 jobs. A figure that I called out as being ridiculous eight years ago, and looks even more ridiculous now, in light of the wholesale collapse of the dairy industry, the rice industry, orchards being ripped up out of the ground, and once thriving communities becoming ghost towns, as people move out and look for work elsewhere. And the same is true of social outcomes. The plan pays lip service to the need to not cause harm to irrigation and farming communities. But the reality on the ground is they're hurting and in some cases dying a little too literally. So let's take stock. The Murray-Darling Basin Plan is failing to live up to what John Howard created it for, failing to live up to its own expectations of social and economic impact, splashing water around preserving man-made unnatural wetlands and flushing billions of litres of water out to sea during a drought. But if you've been watching the news all this time, then you already knew all of that. So the real question is, how come it's being allowed to continue? How come the Minister for Water Resources hasn't stepped in and said, hey, let's stop wasting water during a drought? And why hasn't the Minister for the Environment stepped in and said, hey, why are we overwatering our forests? Why are we eroding our rivers? And why the hell did we drain the Menindee Lakes and allow the Darling River to run dry so fast? And why hasn't the Minister for Agriculture stepped in and said, hey, we're killing our country communities here. We need to rethink what we're doing. Where are they? I'd like to say they've gone missing in action, but it's worse than that. They actually support the continued implementation of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. Take Minister for Water Resources David Littleproud. He not only supports the government's buy-up of 2.75 trillion litres of irrigation water, he actually wants the government to extract 450 billion litres more. But believe it or not, it gets even worse because Minister Littleproud has convinced himself that he's doing farmers a favour, that he's the good guy in all of this because he is giving farmers certainty. Well, look, just moments ago, the Australian Labor Party informed me that I've accepted a, a, an offer uh, by me uh, to put the Basin Plan back on track, to deliver it in full on time. Because people in Australia just want outcomes. And those two million Australians up and down the Basin Plan are fatigued. They've had a gutful. They just want certainty. And this is about giving them the certainty that they deserve and they need to run their businesses. Well, yeah. If by certainty you mean... I'm absolutely certain that I'm going to go bankrupt, I'm certain that I can't afford to feed my sheep or my cows or even my own family, then yes, Minister Littleproud, you have delivered certainty. <laughs> Has Minister Littleproud actually listened to the farmers being hurt by these insane water prices? Because I have, and they don't seem to appreciate his idea of certainty. Water at the moment is um, selling for $660. I paid last week for some, which it should be under 100. Like, uh. We have lost, a, a 40 farms around here have sold their cows. You know, currently our cost of production is, is much higher than, than the income we're receiving for our milk. For how long we can do that, um, you know, it, it's something you can't do for very long. Oh well, it just depends when someone wants to, to close the door on, on an account that we owe money on, you know, like it's that's the reality. It can be tomorrow, I guess. It's sort of, you know, we got two young kids and it sort of puts a strain on your marriage and, and you know, you, you, you're wondering what you're doing it for and do we love it enough to keep going backwards with wondering about your future every day, wondering about where your kids are going to be, all that stuff. I mean, I want the kids to be able to enjoy this. This is their heritage. This is what, 
their um, their late mum and I built this farm up and, and this is all they got left of that, um, memories of their mum. So they want to keep this thing going for that reason alone. Imagine me passing on this debt to my children. Um, how are they going to farm with this sort of debt, with this pressure, with this unknowing whether they're going to get water or not, year upon year? Um, how one would wish that upon their children. You wouldn't wish your children... <coughs> you wouldn't wish to farm in this environment for your children. This is the certainty that Minister Littleproud has created for our irrigation communities. But and I hate to have to say this, it gets even worse. Minister Littleproud is so out of touch, so completely unaware of how the Murray-Darling Basin Plan is affecting our farmers, that he actually believes that if only he was allowed to finish implementing the plan, that suddenly, magically, our farmers would be happy again. We have completed 80% of that plan. The last 20% can be done without going near a farmer. We can complete this plan and we can get the hell out of their life. What? That's like an, an assassin saying, listen, if you just let me finish strangling you, then we won't have to fight anymore, OK? Here's the reality. Finishing the basin plan is not going to put 2.75 trillion litres of water back on the market for our growers to buy and use. It's not going to fix the water shortage, nor make up for the fact that our irrigators have invested billions of dollars into on-farm infrastructure that they can't pay the loans on unless they can access affordable water. Minister Littleproud claiming that finishing the plan will fix the problem means that he has no clue what the problem actually is. The problem isn't that the plan hasn't been fully implemented yet. The problem is that our irrigators are now locked in a war over water that they cannot win. There simply isn't enough to go around anymore because the government bought it up and locked it away. The problem is that because of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan, irrigation water is being flushed out to sea or being used to irrigate what in some cases are man-made wetlands during a drought. The problem is that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan is failing to live up to its own expectations in terms of social or economic impact. And if the Minister for Water Resources can't even understand the problem, then he shouldn't be the Minister for Water Resources. And if you needed more evidence of how little Little Proud understands, take the recent announcement by the government that they're going to sell 100 gigalitres of water to irrigators along the Murray. The plan was announced with much fanfare and back patting and self-congratulations by Minister Little Proud, as if putting a band-aid on a bullet wound is somehow a praiseworthy act. Think about it. 100 gigalitres is less than 4% of the water that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan removed from the water market in the first place. How is that helping? As Harry Brown once said, the government is good at one thing. It knows how to break your legs, hand you a crutch and say, see, if it weren't for the government, you wouldn't be able to walk. Selling to farmers less than 4% of the amount of water they took out of the system in the first place isn't a solution, it's an insult. It's a desperate attempt to distract the media and make people in the city think that the government are part of the solution instead of being the problem. The Murray-Darling Basin Plan is failing. It claimed to be aiming for a triple bottom line with benefits to the environment, communities and the economy. But in truth, it's been an economic disaster for communities all over the basin. But whilst there's been environmental benefits in some places, it's come at the cost of environmental harm in other places that could look like this. But instead, look like this. What's needed now is some courage, some leadership. We need a new Minister for Water Resources who can admit that the Murray-Darling Basin Plan is a failure. Throw it in the bin, repeal the Water Act of 2007 and start again, based on up-to-date science and with the original vision in mind, that the management of the water in the Murray-Darling Basin must not be only for the benefit of the environment, but for the benefit of communities and irrigators as well. We need a plan that acknowledges the environmental benefits of irrigated agriculture, a plan plan that respects the environmental care provided by our farmers to the land that they love and hope to pass on to their children someday. We need a plan that works for all. And that means we need a water minister who actually understands the problem and can admit that the Murray-Darling Basin plan is not working as promised. 
And that means that David Littleproud and his certainty have got to go. There's blood in this water. Our farmers have paid a high price for the failure of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. And our politicians, well, they need to step up or step aside.